All right. Um, all right. I need two things from the audience. Number one, I need somebody to keep me accountable. I'm only going to go 20 minutes. Can somebody time me? We got that. Number two, I'm going to need another beer as soon as this is empty. And it's empty. Well, who's got that? Oh, you, you, you don't like Shinerbach? Oh, no. I mean, it's awful, but all right. Um, yes, I will need another beer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. Hired. All right. Derek Baker, you on my side this time? Was it Derek Baker, Mr. Baker? Where's Mr. Baker? David Baker. You're on my side on this one too, right? All right, okay. All right, so Angular. Um, I'm going to do things a little bit differently than Kyle. Kyle live coded. That's freaking scary. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to talk a, like um, Ember and Angular 4 have very, 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 thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I will remember this guy forever. <laughs> Don't. Um, so Angular and Ember have very, very, very similar uh, paradigms. Um, in fact, the, as Kyle said, the Angular CLI is, or is based off the Ember CLI. So it has the same sort of thing. So it has the, um, the convention over configuration. So um, I have a tutorial already built. So you guys can go through this on your own, obviously. I will be going through the most of this. Um, we'll see how far I get in 20 minutes. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the theory in the beginning and do less live coding. So um, yeah, we're basically going to build the C in a CRUD app. You already know the user story. Let's talk about Angular 4. So the version history of Angular is a little interesting. So we have Angular 1, then we have Angular 2, then we have Angular 4. Where is Angular 3? So Angular uh, 1 is now um, Angular JS. And so for those that are using Angular like 1.6 or like whatever, that's, Angu that's uh, Angular JS. Um, Angular did a complete rewrite for, or um, Google, who is the maintainer of Angular, did a complete rewrite for um, Angular 2. And that was to um, basically implement components. So components, you can think of components as just, um, you know, like a small little part of your DOM. So you're really like composing your DOM together. So you're, you, you can think of your DOM more as a computer program in the same sort of sense that a computer program has uh, modules. So um, Angular 2 was a complete rewrite, and that was just partly because that's where the market or like that's where demand was going. React like was super fast. Um, there were certain paradigms in there that people liked. And so Angular kind of went in that direction. Angular 1.6 um, has components in it. Um, instead of using directives, you use, uh, use components. And that just helps to pave the way um, to Angular 2. So Angular 4, why did we move from Angular 2 to Angular 4? Well, I think it was the Angular router. Somebody screwed up on the dependencies on the Angular router. And so they realized that if they went to Angular 3, there would be like a lot of, um, I think it was more of an internal thing where there would be conflicting dependencies. So instead of trying to just move to Angular 3, they just like, let's just like draw a line in the sand, let's bump it up to Angular 4. So correct me if I'm wrong on that, if anyone knows like the true story on that, but I believe that was like the actual reason. Um, okay, so with Angular, use TypeScript. Does anyone in here besides Hans here use TypeScript? Awesome. All right. I, this is my favorite part of Angular 4 is TypeScript. So TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. Um, it's developed by Microsoft. You can think of JavaScript like back in high school, like I, like I did like whatever the hell I wanted. Like it was awesome. It was great. If I continue to do that, I would be 35 years old living in my parents' basement, right? Maybe. Hopefully there's no one in here like that. But I feel like JavaScript is like that. If you continue to do, use JavaScript and in, in use it in certain ways that probably isn't great, then you'll end up with your, your code base will end up like that. TypeScript adds static types to JavaScript. So I think there's a couple of Java programmers in here that I met, but um, 
Yeah, it, it adds types to it, um, and it also, um, it really, it's a sanity check, so it's like, hey, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe you shouldn't do that. So instead of like depending on a linter to tell you, hey, don't do that, now you actually have like an interpreter there that is saying, hey, you can't do that. So like you have a, um, you know, you have a, s you, you define a variable and you define it as a string that always has to be a string. So it just makes testing a lot easier. It's a lot easier for the uh, developer to, um, at least the developer not using your code base, to understand, hey, that variable is always going to be a string. If it's not a string, I'm going to get an error. And the bigger your code base, the more like that stuff, types of stuff matters. So TypeScript, right out of the box, is my favorite thing about Angular 4. Um, I could go into a, a big talk about that. I do have a blog post about using Node and TypeScript, RESTful API at mherman.org. Um, great website, by the way. Um, where was I at? Where was I at? Uh, was that where I? Yeah, I was here. So, um, yeah, so, uh, or actually I was, I was here. So, uh, the building blocks are uh, very, very similar to Ember and also Angular. So, components, services, directives, and um, you get like, you know, reactive sort of like events, like on click type events. Um, the framework, you'll notice we start with Ember, we go to Angular, we go to React, and we go to vanilla JS. So, we're going from most bloated to least bloated. So uh, somebody asked like, hey, why is Ember 51 megabytes? Because um, it has everything in it. Angular the same. It has everything in it. You don't have to really import any other libraries. It has a router in it. It has, um, it has a HTTP request module. You, a anything that you want is pretty much already in there. So, all right, so I'm gonna start actually live coding now. We see this? Yeah? Smaller, I heard smaller, so. Okay, we'll go bigger. All right, so you start off by uh, npm installing the Angular CLI. Has anyone seen this at symbol right there? What, what does this at symbol do? Magic? No, incorrect. Anyone else? Latest? Scoped modules. Hey, someone's actually reading. All right, so it's for namespacing. <laughs> similar, similar families of, um, it's basically for grouping different packages together. So npm install the CLI, and then you can run ng new, and we'll call this Angular for crud. Ah, so there is a problem right off the bat. Angular does certain things if you build it inside of another project. Um, a lot of what Angular is doing right now is like it already get in, it already initializes a Git repo, and so it's probably saying, "Hey, you already have something inside of here. We can't do a Git repo inside of a Git repo." So I'm going to actually CD out of this and do engineer Angular for crud. Um, let me actually do this in a different directory since um, do it right here. So this is going to do the same sort of thing that the Ember CLI does. So this is going to um, give you a project structure, which is super nice. It also is doing um, it sets up web Webpack and also the TypeScript um, transpiler for you so you don't have to set any of that up. So a lot of times you'd have to configure these right off the bat. So the CLI, is, which is again based on the Ember CLI, the React CLI is based on that. It basically sets this up for you so you have same configuration so you can do your hello world right off the bat without configuring um, anything. I highly recommend learning what, hun what happens underneath the scenes though. So eventually you're gonna have to crack open the hood and um, is it raining out there? Oh, nice. Um, so eventually you're going to have to crack open the hood and uh, probably, probably play with the, uh, the configuration with Webpack or the CLI. Um, but um, 
doing a really like hello world right off the bat is like really easy with um, just the CLI. So this is taking a little bit to install. Which network am I on? I'm on Xfinity right now. It's probably really slow. I don't want to switch networks at this point because it's probably in the pro process of installing. So you guys can sit here and stare at me. Nope. All right. We got it done. Sweet. And you look for CRUD. And so now we can do ng serve. And this um, connects to the npm start. And so basically, this is going to fire up an app on localhost 4200. What do we know about 4200? Same as the Ember CLI. Again, this is based on the Ember CLI. So this is uh, transcompiling everything from one um, abstraction layer, TypeScript, down to um, ES5, so we can do it in the browser. And then it's bundling dependencies together. And it looks like it finished and it's successful. So now if we go to localhost um, 4200, you can see the hello world there. Uh, Derek, was it Derek? Derek did not create this one, correct? What was it? David, David damn it. All right, <laughs> I'm going to get that one of these days. Dave, Derek, David, same difference. All right. There is also a Derek. All right, well, I, that's confusing. All right, how much time do I have? Ten minutes. All right, we're going to jam through this real quick. All right, set up with Angular CLI. All dogs. All right, define a service. What is a service? Let's talk about what a service is really fast. I got notes on this, so we're going to go to the notes so you guys can like read along. So a service is basically where you want to encapsulate um, common functionality. So anything that you want to use in multiple components, you want to abstract out to a service. So um, I like to, it used to be with Angular 1, it used to be uh, fat controllers, skinny services. Now it's fat, com or, uh, still fat services. They are always going to be fatty, but components are now the skinny part. So I have a nice little uh, command here that will create my service for me. And why was that on my clipboard? What the hell? You guys didn't see that. I have no idea what that was, but it uh, probably wasn't great. Ah, okay. All right, generated that. So if we take a look at our project structure, so tree dash um, I, what is that, node modules? So if we look at our project structure here, everything that we care about is in our source directory here. Um, and you can see that we created the service here. Um, the app.module, that's like basically like the brain of our app. Everything that we're doing is going to go inside that um, app.module. So if I open this up in Atom, I'm not going to use Vim or Emacs or whatever that other dude was doing. <laughs> um, and we look at the app.module here. So the ng model, this is a decorator. Those coming from other languages probably know um, what a decorator is. And you can see, like, oh, this is a like, little bit different syntax than probably vanilla JavaScript. But this is the brain of your app here. Everything that you do, you're going to register in here. Bigger, bigger. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So everything that you do is going to be in here. And so we just created that dog service. So we need to import that. So import this in here. And we need to provide that to the rest of our app. So I'm going to add this. I'm going to inject this into my provider here. So now this is available in the rest of our app. Um, I think that's everything we need to get that service working. So now in terms of the service itself, I'm going to copy and paste this code because I'm not an insane person. Uh, but let's take a look at what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah, I could type it out. But I'd probably run out of time really fast. OK, anyways, so we have our base URL there. That's the bark wire. Um, we have an in at injectable here, another decorator. This makes it basically a dependency, so we can inject it into our component. Um, we have constructor. Um, in the instructor, I'm injecting the HTTP module. So with this module, I'm making HTTP requests. Um, inside here, those that are uh, familiar with observables, oh, they're like, hey, this is anti-pattern. I would say. Um, I don't know all that much about observables and how they work, but when I was writing this, I felt dirty writing this. So I'm wrapping a promise in an observable. Observable is um, a, basically a way to handle asynchronous code, and it's a stream. So you can subscribe to a stream. Um, here, I'm wrapping the stream in a 
promise. And this allows me, I did it this way because I'm familiar with promises, not familiar with um, uh, streams and observables. So basically with Angular, this is returning an observable sequence, or Angular 4 is returning an observable sequence. And at this point, I have certain operators that I can use to handle that sequence. And right now I'm using map, which um, you know, is just going to loop over it and then subscribe allows me to connect to that observable. So, um, and then like at this point, I'm basically doing a reject and resolve here. Probably the better way to do this is return the observable and handle the observable on the other end. So inside the component, I'm going to be um, uh, basically calling dot then on this. And that's gonna either return the, you know, the resolve or the reject, depending on what's happening here. I would probably, if I were to write this again, I would probably just return the damn observable and deal with it on the other side of things. If anyone's more familiar with observables than I am, then you can correct me on that, but um, that's probably how I'd do this if I had to do this again. Okay, so I have my get all dogs here. So I have my service hooked up. Probably, how much time do I have? Like five minutes, holy shit. <laughs> We're gonna have to like move fast here. Okay, all right. So you can read that. <laughs> I don't like your attitude. Okay. Anyways, I use the CLI to uh, create a component. I'm going to copy and paste this. So if I go inside here, I have my components directory now, dog. Uh, you can see this wires up my specs, so my tests as well. So um, a nice little handy feature there. Okay, in here, basically, I have a um, directive here, component. This has metadata um, about my component. I then have my class. I then am, uh, let's skip this part here. We have my constructor. I'm injecting that dog service. Remember, I made it at injectable, so that way it can be injected in, into uh, components. On my init, basically, when this fires, it's going to fire this method. You can see the method here. I'm resolving the promise. This is, refers back to the actual service. I am calling that uh, method uh, them and resolving the promise. So you can see up here, dogs and dogs here. So this relates back to here. So this is where I'm declaring my type. So in TypeScript, I'm saying any. I'm doing any because I don't know what the hell comes back from that API, and I don't want it to crap out. I could, you know, like declare a type like this and maybe say like ID is a you know, number, um, image, URL is like a string. I don't actually know what comes back with this. So a lot of times with like Java or Go, what you have is like you can't declare, and I don't believe you can do this for those that know um, Java and Go right off the bat. I don't think you have an any type like this. I think it's actually um, for Go. I think they're actually talking about doing this right now, sort of like a generic. But basically, I'm saying this can be any. So it can be any type. If I could call this a string, this would crap out and break because it's really an array of objects that's coming back. Um, but after I know what it is, and I console log it, then I'll probably add my type in here. Um, so at this point, I'm saying any, it can be whatever. I'm lazy, I'm also, I don't know what it is. Okay, all right, how much time do I have? How much time do I have? <laughs> 25 seconds. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's wire up my template here. So I have like some sugar here. This ng4 just lets me loop through those dogs. Um, that must be lowercase, whatever. Uh, what was that error actually? Yeah, whatever. Okay. Let dog of dogs, dog.name. All right. I think this is all I need at this point to wire this up. Let's see if this craps out. So we can run ng serve. Ah, listening to local is 4200. Oh, yeah, we're building. Oh, hello. Hello, hello. Oh, okay, we got an error here. So what's the error? Um, so, uh, okay, cannot find module dog.service. So dog.component. Let's see, service is dog.service. Um, What's up? App.writer. 
Yeah, what, yeah, maybe I didn't even read that full error. Yeah, I imported into the providers, dog.service. So when you create, um, good, good call there. So when I created the dog.component, this wired it up for me already. So it imported dog.component and dog.component and declared it in here. So that already did it for me. So when I ran that, that command to create the component, this command, it automatically imported it into my um, app.module and then added it to the array here of um, declared modules or declared. Hey, JJ, JJ, what? Where? What am I doing? Oh, services. Okay, so where am I at right now? Components? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, awesome. Services. Okay. Hmm. This is why I like, if I like did my uh, temp or my uh, tutorial.md file correctly, I wouldn't have done this. Or I wouldn't have uh, had that problem, but. All right. So it's building, it's doing all its stuff. Magic is happening. Oh, yay. Okay. So we've got a local host, 4,200. Uh, one minute? <laughs> really? All right, Kyle went three minutes over, so I am going to wire up the, uh, I'm going to, well, all right, I'm going to configure routing real quick so we can get this working. All right, oh, let's read this. Okay, what's happening there? Okay, hello, hello, hello. I'm going to put this into my app.module.ts. All right, so I'm setting up routing here so I can configure a component to a router. So basically, I'm importing the uh, router module. I am setting up routes here. I'm declaring a type for routes. Um, I then have a few routes here. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I need to do for that? Now I'm just going to follow the template, like, or this tutorial that MD straightforward so I don't screw up. Ah, yes. So inside my app.component.html, I then, uh, where is that app.component.html? So instead of all this mumbo jumbo here, I'm just going to control everything with the router. Um, I need to save this. So now if I go here uh, and refresh, there are my dogs. So you can see here, service is wired up correctly. If you remember, that comes from, that should be coming from what, the constructor? Ah, yes, and the guy at the constructor. All right, it's cool. Uh, so now I'm making my API call. Uh, I'm subscribing to this, I'm resolving it, and then on the other side of things, I am on .bin, I am then console logging, the response that comes back, and then I am grabbing this.dogs, and um, that equals to response, and that um, ties back to the dogs here. How much time do I have? Am I up? Am I like three minutes over? <laughs> oh, man. All right, I guess that's it. That's all I got. Um, so at this point, I would just have to wire up my style sheets, and then I'd be pretty much there. So let me do that quick really, really, really fast. So I'm going to wire up my style sheet. It's nice because in the sides of style.js, this is automatically imported. So anytime you want global styles, you can just put it in here. This should have already updated. Oh, it looks a little bit better. Now, okay. Now let's wire up the, um, the actual, um, what the hell am I doing? Let's actually wire up the uh, card. So this is going to go into my index. So this adds like the header and footer. And then if I wire up my actual dot component, this is going to make it look a little bit nicer. So this, all this is doing, just adding some nice, um, nice classes. So where's my dog component.html? Okay, there we go. So I got there. I kind of got there. Um, takeaways from this: very similar to Ember, bloated. It has a lot in there, um, which can be nice or may not be nice, depending on what you're doing. Um, it also has TypeScript in there. 
I didn't take advantage of TypeScript at all, but obviously you can. If you have like a junior like code base, like I like recommend like using TypeScript. I also like I feel like if you are strong in DevOps, use microservices, use TypeScript. Throw those juniors into that REST RESTful API, let them do whatever they want. But all right. That is my spiel.